guys, Survival Nomad. We're back here with a new video. Today we're in the lovely Tawakala State Park with my wife. She's finally decided to help me do my channel a little more. And she's glaring at me now. <laughs> but today's video, or at least this portion of the video, is going to be on my Czechoslovakian haversack and what my contents are. I had an older video up, but I decided it was just subpar and that I wasn't in the environment to prove to you that it's actually a useful piece of gear. So I brought it out here today with me, which I normally do anyway, to go ahead and show you. So we're going to start from the top and go down from the bottom. Um, and like all kits that every most people have, it will vary from, from season to season. Right now we're in the summer. So if you're watching this in the wintertime wondering where all, why I'm even carrying a haversack, then well, now you know. So um, if you, if you want to bring it forward real quick, I'll show them what's inside here before I go in. So inside of this sack right here, you're going to have your three main compartments. You're going to have one here, a larger compartment. A small compartment right here that actually stops and you can hold small things and then the large empty space in between all of those all right so what we're going to actually have <laughs> is um in my small compartment that you saw on the right side of the bag we're going to have my first item probably one of my most favorite items is going to be my ust shovel um when i do actually go out and use this it goes into every bag i have so if i change bags or I change or I go camping without my haversack this goes into that other kit um, the next thing I have is going to be some bleed stop the reason why I have that bleed stop is because out here in Chihuahua or around where I am I don't really come across baby boo-boos I usually see somebody like at my old job they busted their Achilles tendon had to stop the bleeding immediately had a guy fall on the rocks hurt himself had to stop that bleeding immediately and so it's normally just big bandages and stuff for me um, it could be different for you, but I'm setting this up for what I typically come across. The next thing I have is the actual first aid kit, uh, first aid kit, sorry. And um, that's just going to have some of your simple boo-boo kit items in here. Two uh, bandages, something to get rid of other things, and uh, a bunch of swabs to put on. Um, obviously, I have the small boo-boo kit in the back, like I was just talking about. And that's, like I said, it's just very basic. You don't, you're not out here performing combat first aid on somebody with a sucking chest wound. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and there's a road, like, right over there, so I can easily get them there and have them, you know, ready to go. And the next thing I have in that sack is two small items. They're both battery-based. This is my charger. Um, it has two ports for me and my wife to use at the same time, which is very important to me. This will charge both of our phones together about seven times. Uh, of course, we do have LG phones, so they're not exactly the most high-end in the world. And then I carry some batteries. Um, I carry AA because what I carry right now is all AA. In the winter, I typically carry AAA items, so I switch to AAA. All right, and then so the next thing I have on the right side in that bigger portion is going to be my flashlight. Um, again, this is a haversack, so it doesn't need to have, like, you know, I'm not going out into the woods for 20 years with this. Um, my wife actually got me this for my birthday, probably the best light I've ever had in my life. And I'm not saying that just because she's right there. It's actually the truth. Um, I got it in a small survival kit, and I'll do a small... Thing on it or later but small light something that I recommend you have something that can become a strobe or a point light a spotlight they work out great um, next item I'm white I burn some sunscreen it is clearly <laughs> um, then uh, hand sanitizer you know with the coronavirus currently going on this is something I've been carrying forever because you know hygiene's a thing but um, now more than ever hand sanitizer um, and then also some, some mouthwash. You know, like I said, I carry this everywhere I go. If I eat something really nasty like uh, vinegar or like a vinaigrette or something and I'm out in town, I can always get that smell out of my mouth. Um, small multi-tool. I don't believe in, like, the crazy multi-tools. I think it's insane that somebody would waste that much money on a multi-tool. This one's been put to really good use, as you can see. Had it for about seven years, and it's, it's still kicking. It's a Gerber Crucial. Look it up. Really good stuff. The next piece I have in here is actually a supplement to my multi-tool kit. And uh, when I go out in town, I have a lot of small things I have to get open or fix. And this really does the job. It's a craftsman tool. Basically, this thing right here, you, it allows you to put a, um, it allows you to put something here or into here and then twist accordingly. This is very heavy steel. And um, it can actually hold up to 800 pounds if you could pick it up. It will not break. Um, and you can kind of tailor this kit to whatever you'd like because you can just adjust to the actual head you need for your day-to-day -day life. It's a very awesome piece of gear. I'd look into it if I was you. Um, 
we're out here hiking, obviously, and when I do carry this, I do walk a lot, so I have some foot powder. Um, moving into the big portion of the kit, I just have a small little Ozark Trail um, binoculars in case I need to scout something out on my way home or when I'm out seeing, sightseeing. Um, electrical tape, can't go wrong with that. Um, I have a fire kit, which I'll be describing in later on in the video, on my other portion of the, of the video. And this stuff is really great. It's multi-use, and I think you'll enjoy that small portion of the video as well. Uh, the next thing I carry is one of is is a cutting tool. This right here is my UST survival knife. It is solid tang, and it and it is honestly probably one of the best knives I've ever purchased. And I've owned Gerber, I've owned all that stuff, but um. I continuously re-blew this knife in order to make sure that um, it is, so if you look right here, some of the bluing is coming back off, but um, I've used this knife in three, and sorry, in six different eco zones, um, two months at a time each, and this thing is just kicking, alright, I have had to replace the paracord because I've had to use it in the past, but that's not going to stop me from using the knife itself, it's a very good knife, I check into it. They are becoming harder to find. I know Walmart stopped selling these, but um, it's not what I'm talking about now. So definitely my knife, definitely something you need to worry about yourself. If you don't trust the knife, don't put it in your bag. Um, field it before you trust it, so to speak. And then the same thing for the flint striker. I've gone through hundreds of these. UST makes a good flint striker, and they're cheap. So um, cheap as in money-wise, by the way. They, they're very durable. Um, this is just a bag of rice I have with me today for lunch. What I typically leave inside of this pack, though, are these crackers. I have two crackers from the MREs. Um, if you guys don't know what a MRE is, a meal ready to eat. And that is for the U.S. military. You can also find civilian versions. But I like the jam and the cheese, so I just keep some crackers. Gives me about 1,000 calories right there, if I'm correct, roughly. And then um, I do also have some paracord. This is 30 feet of paracord here. Um, for those of you who don't who wonder why I don't have more than that, if you break these strands open, you have six strands in there, and that is six times 30 plus the actual uh, casing it comes in. You, you begin to see why you don't need so much of this cord. All right. Um, the next thing I have in this big piece is going to be a compass. Um, make sure you have a compass that you know how to use and that you trust. Me, like I said, I'm a big UST fan, and I just don't need a lensthetic compass. I don't get lost like that. I usually map out my plots and stuff like that and have plans all throughout the route to get off at any point in time and so I don't necessarily need a compass because I'm not typically going to get super duper lost so I do have a nice little compass and that sits in here um, one thing that I did switch out today for that I don't that I don't have today is gonna be my uh, USGI poncho that usually sits down here in the bottom section but today all I have is just some turkey spam and it's rolled up inside of a um, oh lord Excuse me, guys. Sorry about that. It is rolled up inside of a bandana. Uh, I use that, like, all the time if you see crazy marks on it and stuff. It's because it gets, it gets the crap used out of it. And then I also have what I typically use for a stove, which I'll pull it out since I was talking about it. Pull it all out here. Let it sit and uh, open it up. There's my turkey spam on, the, on you guys' left and my stove that I use on the right. So um, these are a dollar. Just in case you're wondering what they are, you can buy them from the dollar store. You can also get some a different variant from Walmart, but it does not have this seal cap lid. If you can even get it off. There we go. And that's one thing I like about it is, see, even if it starts to leak out, it'll drain back into these holes, which are actually used as vintage holes. And see, it's going back in there now. And you can cap it off and not have to worry about burning yourself. Um, for a dollar, they're immaculate. I think I've used this seven times, and I still have about half of one in there. And some good old turkey spam. And again, here is my actual bandana. And if you just look back here, you can see all of it. And that is what I carry. It's And I still have a little bit of space left over. Again, I usually have the USGI poncho in the bottom. But for today, 100% chance of sunshine. So I decided to drop that weight and put some food in. Um, if you want to see real quick, I'm sorry, I'll throw that in here for you. Because some people will say, oh, you didn't put your in there. Well, they're now up there. Inside of here, there you go. Um, that's what it looks like unloaded, and then the bottom side unloaded. So, some of you may be wondering how effective this is. I have not had it fail me. I thought it would at first, and it didn't. Um, and then, before I head out on the second half of this video, 
Just a fun fact, I do believe this is actually a Czech Republic um, bag. I'm not too sure. This is the Czechoslovakian markings. I know it is Czechoslovakian, but it said it was a messenger bag, and it has all the lookings, including the piece that goes around your waist, of a gas mask bag. If anybody is watching the channel knows what it is, it'd be great for you to leave a comment in the description. Oh, sorry, leave a comment down below Sorry about it, so that way we can know a little more about it, and myself included. Thanks for watching this portion of the video. I hope you're enjoying it. The next part's going to be awesome. It's going to be on my uh, oh, my new Serbian mess kit. I told you guys I'd bring it out to the field and show you, so I will. Keep watching, guys. Hey, guys. What's up? It's Survival Nomad out here. We are sitting down for the day, taking our little break. My wife is up the way collecting some stuff, so I'm recording this portion on my own. But we're going to talk about the uh, Czech, not so, I keep saying Czech Slovakian, you know, I'm sorry guys. The uh, Serbian mess kit. So down here, under that little cup, I'm going to, it's going to be a little choppy video, sorry about that. Down there, I've got my stuff running, and I'm boiling the water that I'm standing over top of right now. Um, I'm also eating that turkey spam. I was going to heat it up. Whatever's left after I boil this water, I'm going to heat up real quick and eat it and get back on the trail. I had some rice, but I don't think I have time to do that. And um, I will say this. One thing that I do like about the Czechoslovakian kit that you cannot do with the civilian, well, with the military kits, or the U.S. military kits, is it's squared off. So in awkward stations like this, I have an edge over where I can put my stuff. Um, I also like the fact that I can collect water with that and then put it into this after filtering it out. And I can also have another cup if I want to share some water with a friend or do what or what have you. And that does carry a lot of water there. I still have a little bit left. Um, and then, you know, obviously the spoon, the knife and everything, which is kind of spread everywhere right now, is really good. So um, I just wanted to let you guys know that I do actually use this thing a lot. Um, I used it yesterday. I had some cool video on it, but I just... It, I, I was slurring my words more than I am right now. I was tired there was people in and out of the video walking through it constantly and I just figured it was crap so I didn't want to give it out to you but today we have a pretty peaceful as you can see there's nobody around me other than my wife obviously back here but um that's it we are pretty far away from anyone um and that Czech Slovakian kit is doing all right uh the water on the other hand is taking a bitch of a half to boil because of where it's sitting it usually takes about 20 minutes with that but I don't have it conveniently located on the flame, so it might take a little bit longer. Um, yeah.